What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the park, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the same. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Welcome, everybody. John Corcoran here. I am the host of this show. This is a live episode, and over 10 years of hosting this show, I have had such a great privilege to talk with so many amazing, interesting individuals from top CEOs to founders, entrepreneurs, people who've exited companies, uh, all kinds of organizations ranging from YPO to EO, Activation Blizzard, Lending Tree, Open Table, and many more. It's really such a great pleasure to do it. Uh, before we get started with this episode, this live episode, though, we want we always like giving a couple of quick shout outs to people and mentioning a few people. But in this episode, we're going to be talking about how to create great content in a podcast, something we haven't tackled before. And we'll talk about three different ways that you can create great content in a podcast. And we thought we'd start it out, Dr. Weiss, my guest here, my business partner, my friend, by focusing on some great content, or at least in our opinion, our humble opinions that has been created on our podcast. So great episodes in our past podcasts that we have created. So I'll start with you, Jeremy. What are some great episodes that you've created in the past where you've just really walked away and you're like, man, that was great. And John, this will be on Inspired Insider Podcast as well. So we'll put it on there. Um, yeah, I mean, past episodes. Um, and I do want to say uh, this episode is brought to you by Rise25, where we help businesses connect to their dream 100 relationships and give to their dream 100 relationships. Cause for John and I, it's all about relationships. It's the number one thing in our life is relationships in a podcast. I have seen no better way to give to my best relationship by profiling them, featuring them. And so you, if you have questions, you go to rise 25.com, but case in point, John, we love profiling people we admire. We love and and you know, uh, I, I had David Mann and Derek Smith on from Firefly Group. They were introduced to me by Dan Zawacki of Lobstergram. He was the first person to send live lobsters in the mail, direct mail. Uh, imagine getting a live lobster in the mail. And he did that back in, in the 80s. And he was on featured on Oprah um, and uh, Howard Stern talked about him. And what makes for great content, one of the things we will talk about, we have to go into is great stories. And that's what sticks out. And Gino Wickman, also who I've had on and you've had on, um, I think, you know, Dan Zawacki referred David Mann and Derek Smith, who bought EOS from Gino Wickman, which I didn't mm -hmm. realize at the time. And all of those three are great. You know, the EOS system is, is an amazing framework for businesses. So, um, those are a couple that people should check out and there's some amazing stories in there. What about you? Yeah, that's a great one. Those are a couple of great ones there. Um, yeah, for me, you know, I had, it's hard to narrow it down and you make a great point because a lot of times when I walk away from a great interview, one of the things that I value the most is just the personal relationship that came from it. So it's, it's sometimes hard to separate those two. Uh, but certainly my interview with Alexi Cashin, uh, who later became a client, is a client now, but she told an amazing, heart-wrenching personal story of um, embezzlement uh, at her company, was very transparent about it, um, and just the honesty and the rawness really came through, so that was really great. Um, on the other end of the, the scale, a different type of interview, but Jason Swank, who's a mentor for you and I, um, talked about the, you know, the, the challenges of building up an, an agency and some of the things that you need to be aware of. Um, and then another recent one, Nick Demolakis, um, he's, he's a great guy. And he told this amazing story of in the early nineties, he was in college and he built up this website using his co college's servers, you know, like so people did at the time, you know, you didn't have internet access. So he hosted this website and it got a ton of attention, like, hundreds of thousands of downloads um, and it was kind of disruptive to the music industry. And he told this crazy story about showing up to the, the, the president of the university's office and all these music executives were sitting around the board table. It was kind of a crazy story. So on that, Fabrice Grinda, who is a big a VC investor, talked about that he closed a deal with Snoop Dogg um, at a crazy party. Um and 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 also with Wu Tang Clan, 
And if you look at Fabrice Grinda and you look at Wu Tang Clan or Snoop Dogg, <laughs> you think they're polar opposites the way <laughs> they act, the way they look, just their whole persona. And so he told that story as well. That's cool. These remind me of the music industry. So let's dive into this topic, how to create great content. Now, Jeremy, you literally created a course on this before. Um, I'm constantly learning from you uh, all the time about ways to elicit great content from, you know, in, in podcast episodes. Um, let's start with your number one tip, which is to bring in stories because people love stories rather than advice, which is the exact opposite of what I'm doing right now. We're, we're giving advice rather than stories, but maybe you can think of an example of a story. Actually, no, what I mean, we think, just did was a story because we just told exactly. stories from our, yeah. We t I mean, the biggest thing is, and you know, from your dad also, from movies and TV, people want stories and love stories and they're entertaining, they're educational. So stories and examples are great. And we, that's why we just gave some examples of some past episodes with and we didn't just say oh check out you know the episode with Fabrice Grindo we said check it out with when he talked to Snoop Dogg and they you know Snoop Dogg was uh hitting a bong and they were closing a big deal right and so you want to listen or when you said Alexi Cash and embezzlement you you get drawn into the curiosity yeah. of what happened Right. There. You don't say, you know, on that episode, we had 17.5 stories. Go check it out. You know, that would be <laughs> very, not very interesting. But you've got a great tip for how to get people to tell stories because sometimes it's not so easy. Yeah. I mean, it's going to go into the second point a little bit. And you could shortcut this by doing research. When you do research, you already know the story. Like I remember when I had Nolan Bushnell on the podcast, who is the founder of Atari. He was Steve Jobs' mentor. And I listened to his book. Again, you don't have to listen to everyone's book, but I listened to his book. In there, he talked about that Steve Jobs offered him 33% uh, of Apple for $50,000. Okay. So obviously, I'm going to ask him. We know he turned that down. He'd be the richest person on the planet if he, if he took, that, you know, took that deal. But I obviously asked him that story. So taking people to a specific point in time almost forces them to tell a story. Right. 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 So yeah. what, when, you know, when I took him to that, that conversation, he had to tell a story. If someone is on your podcast and they're, you're engaging with them, they don't tell a story. Like, let's say you did no research. The person's not telling stories. You can take them to a specific point in time. Tell me a time when. Mm. Or get, or if they say something, like you say, Jeremy, I have had several favorite episodes. Um, the one with Alexi Cash, and I'm like, well, what was it? Well, give me an example of a story she told in that. So give me an example is another way you can get to a specific story as well. Right, right. And do you find that you need to prompt people beforehand? You know, no. I mean, if you have a good story, you know, so that goes kind of in the second one right? The second ways to make a really good content interview is, is research. Mm -hmm. You know, research could be you researching it. It could be a pre-interview right before the interview where you are asking them. Like I, I ask, you know, if I have John, I'm, John, um, you know, tell me a great example uh, or tell me a crazy story from this period of time. So we may brainstorm a little bit before we hit record on a cool story to tell um from the journey right but right? it doesn't it, you, what you're saying is it doesn't need to uh, take a ton of time in order to extract those stories and you can always just ask people for examples and and if it is a meaningful story from their life uh one that they've told many times before which is probably one of the the types of stories you want people to tell right. on a podcast then they're probably going to be able to yeah. come up with it yeah. so the second point is do your research and what a common question we get from people is how much research and what should i do for research when I'm starting a podcast or I'm doing a podcast. Yeah. I'm a terrible person to ask this question to. Yeah, of course. Okay. <laughs> right. Well, we take different approaches. Uh, I, 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 you know, could never keep up with the amount of research that you do. You, 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 there's interviews where you've done eight to 10 hours worth of research. Oh, more than that. I uh, mean, Wim Hof, when I had Wim Hof on, if anyone knows him, Guinness Book of Records, he's called the Iceman. He's, you know, he has a Ted talk where he's basically submerged in ice 
and doing the talk and <laughs> most people would die literally from it. But um, I probably did 25 hours of research for that one. You just, it was so you, when you have people on that you admire and that you really are excited to have on, which you should be everyone. You almost want to do research on them. Sometimes I go overboard, you know, with that, but you don't need to do that amount of research. Yeah. Obviously, if you look at their LinkedIn page, we were just talking, I mean, before we hit record is you, there's so much information. If you go to their social media, if you go to their LinkedIn, you go to their website, there's so much information there. Like, I think, you know, if you look, I forgot who it was, but one of the podcast guests I saw on their LinkedIn, they had, were one of seven kids. Wow. And I was obviously going to ask them a specific question about, tell me what the dinner table was like. Give me one dinner table story with seven kids. Right. And again, it's research to take him to tell a specific story that they probably have never told before. Yeah. Also. Or they don't get asked about it all that often. You know, you do that extra layer of, of research and you're right. There's so many social media, you know, there's so much more information about people out these days now compared to 15 years ago that you can find something. And if you can find that little nugget of something that you have in common or that's just as of interest to you, it can really make such a huge difference in, in terms of the content. There's two ends of the spectrum, right? There's someone you have on that there's literally nothing online about them. Maybe they have a social media and there's someone who's published 24 books, right? Yeah. So how did I find that harder actually yeah. when there's yeah. too much information on it? It is. I, I and just how did someone, you prepare? Talk yeah. about. I mean, you know. I just interviewed someone like that who published 24 books. I had just, you know, it was in academia. I'd published in hundreds of articles. So it was impossible to, you know, to, 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 keep up on all that. You know, I ended up, I, I ended up finding a presentation. He had kind of like one core, um, framework or idea or, or concept that he had, uh, that we focused on in the interview. And I found a webinar presentation on it and I went through the PowerPoint presentation, which is great because it kind of dumbs it down to its main points. And I use that for the framework of the um, interview. And then he had also co-authored a book with a sitting secretary of state, which is the only time that had, had been done. And so I thought that was really interesting. I have a background in politics, so I was interested in that. And so I asked him about that as well. So you find, again, you find those things that you're interested in. I think, you know, that kind of goes to the next point. So one, make sure that you incorporate stories and examples in the content. Number two, Make sure you do some research that helps you do number one. Um, and, and number three that we talk about is don't overthink it, right? Because the more you push, you know, actually do interviews and, and do content, the better you get at it. Yeah. And that goes into kind of what you just said with how you do the research. You, what I do is, so I don't overthink it. I latch on to a couple things that I'm really curious about mm -hmm. and you can have a whole discussion, which will branch out from there about the things you're curious about. So if you're thinking, if you're like me and you maybe tend to overthink things, if you don't and you go with the flow, that then you'll be fine. Right. And but yeah. oftentimes it's the intellectuals, uh, the heavily educated, the high fact finders that struggle with this. It's amazing to me. Yeah. You know, I remember talking to someone who, she had a law degree and an MBA and incredibly intelligent, incredibly articulate. She was like, I don't know what I'll ask these people. I don't know what I'll talk to them about. I was like, you, there's so many things that you talk to people about, especially, you know, if you own your own company or if you've ever done any kind of sales, you got to have a little bit of the gift to gab with people. And there's certain things that you come back to again and again that you take interest in and that you just kind of go-to questions that you get comfortable with that you want to ask over and over again. Um, I'm certainly that way. I have certain comfortable qu questions that I'm comfortable with. Um, so yeah, I think, but that's a great point about not overthinking it because you, you're not competing with 60 Minutes. You're not competing with Terry Gross. You don't have to worry about that. You can just be you and have a conversation. Yeah, and if you're curious about it, if you have a genuine curiosity, that's going to come out to the person that's going to come out to someone listening to it. And it's going to lead to further discussion uh, about it. And, yeah. you know, one thing to point out, I know if you go to rise25.com, there is a courses tab um, where we have a uh, predictable prof uh, podcast profits uh, course. And we talk one of the modules 
that we do in this course is all about this, right? So we go in great depth around the structure of the interview, what questions we recommend, what we like. We can't go over all of it now, but um, those are these are just a few kind of pieces of that. Um, I don't know if you want to touch on anything else. Yeah, last um, thing I want to ask you about before we wrap things up is um, one of the things I love about doing a podcast is that you it, it gives you license to ask in smart people questions that you're curious about. But where do you draw the line between asking a question which is one that's for you and, and asking a question that's relevant for the audience? How do you decide on the difference between those two? Because I, I've heard lots of interviews where I'm listening to the interviewer and I'm like, man, that was a boring question. Or <laughs> like, that's really just something that that person's curious about. I don't think the audience that's, is all that interested in you it. You know, that's true. And And by the way, I don't know if you'll like my answer to this, but... Um, I, 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 like I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I preface everything with, I don't think you're like my answer, <laughs> but I lean more towards the be selfish, ask what you're curious about. And I've heard, and I, I felt the same way, John, I've listened to podcasts where someone asks, well, what are you, your favorite bottles of wine or something? And I personally could care less about that that like i'm not a wine connoisseur person but there's going to be certain people who are attracted to that show and that interviewer because they are they like the guests they like the likes of that host and i may not be but that's yeah. totally fine yeah. and people are going to be attracted more to me who if i ask certain questions and you who you ask certain questions so listen we can never please everyone so i default to if you're curious about it, you care about it as a person then now there, there's some to taking into the guest's account and I will, before some interviews, I will call up a couple friends and I'll say, Hey, I have this person on, what are you curious about? And then I will merge what they're curious about with what I, so if they say five things and I'm like, I could care less about like three of those things that you said personally, I'm going to still gravitate towards the two that they are curious about, but I am also curious about. So I still, it's still, I default to what do you care about? And if you can incorporate what other people care about, if you also care about it, cool. If not, don't over going back to the other one, don't overthink it, right? right. Go with the stuff that you care about. And if you care about what wine the person drinks, ask it. I don't care personally. Yeah. And in other listeners who don't care about it will get turned off by it, maybe. But that's okay sure. if you yeah. care about it. You want to attract your people. Um, one final, actually, additional question I, I thought of, which is um, under the idea of creating great content. So naturally, because you want to create great content, you should go back and you should listen to the entire thing, edit out all the ums and the ahs and the awkward moments and all that kind of stuff, right? Of course not. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you agree with me on this one. But it's in a, the, the what we love about podcasting is it's an authentic medium that you could just talk you know and, and editing every making it perfect editing you know there's there's shows that do that I mean, that's they're in the business of broadcasting podcasting. yeah and you know, are that's American a little Life, different all that stuff yeah so if you are producing if you, the there's a small percentage of a very very highly produced show and they should be doing that okay the large, we're talking a large majority who are not going to be doing that, that they are really about the authentic conversation. I'm not going to name the podcast, a podcast I actually like and listen to. I think it's overproduced. Like I just actually get annoyed by it. I just like, let them talk, like let the conversation flow. I want to hear all of it. And there's so much editing to it. I've heard that, that I well, can't, yeah. I can't get into the full flow of the conversation because yeah. they're editing so much out. They're clipping so much in. So I like just listening almost like if I'm in the room, you're flying the wall, two people talking and right. it doesn't need to be overly produced. And, and I think, I think speaking as someone who's done a podcast for quite some time, the discipline of doing it does make you a better speaker. Certainly. Uh, it makes you naturally try and improve the way that you talk. I'm being very conscious of it right now, as you can tell. Well, you um, know, we, I think Lee, my wife listened to one of ours talking and she's like, John's so much better than you. <laughs> she's probably exact same thing. My wife, Nicole said, actually, uh, the other and, way around uh, referring to you. John, John speaks so eloquently. 
Jeremy's really I, I go, I go thing. things. You're, you're really kind of struggling at, with it. <laughs> so I, yeah. I think certain, you know, it goes with practice, like you said. I'd like to, and if there's anything else on this, I like to finish up with a question, but um anything else on these Go ahead. topics. Go ahead. I want to talk about our best, you know, we talk about stories and examples. We talk about research importance and just over not overthinking it and having curiosity. So it kind of relates to this overarching theme is what have been your favorite, if you think back at your podcast, and we talked about some interesting uh, ones people should check out, but what, what would you say if like are the top two best stories, you don't have to tell the full story, that stick out from you? Again, we've both been podcasting for probably over 10 years. What has been the top one or two stories? And I'll start since I'm putting you on the spot from your podcast. And I remember, and it's not always the most popular, most well-known guest. Mm -hmm. um, and I had Chris Ategeka on and he, he talked about how, cause the other thing I like about stories, you remember them and they're actionable cause you can remember them. He talked about how he, both his parents died of HIV before he was age forgot what it was, maybe seven or something. And he had to take care of his siblings. He think he had four or five of them. And he got a, um, a won a lottery to go come to the U S to, um, go to college. And the first time he owned a pair of shoes was he was 18. And I remember this, he told the story where he was on the airplane, first time he's obviously ever been on an airplane to come to the US. He won this lottery to, to stay with a family in the US. And the lady came around handing bottles of water like they do on an airplane. And he literally thought God descended from the heavens because the way he got water was he had to walk five miles, pump a well, walk five miles back or whatever, however the story goes, and someone just handling handing him a bottle of water, stuff that we take for granted, impacted me, you know, and immediately made me think I have to have more gratitude for the some, you know, the simple things that we take for granted. So for anyways, sure. yeah. What's sure. what's a favorite story? Uh, yeah, from, you know, from I mean, there's, Europe, I there's so many, but one that comes to mind, it, you know, the I often ask the same question at the end where I ask people if they're giving a, a speech for lifetime achievement, who would they thank? And I'm looking for them to pull out, you know, maybe someone from their childhood or whatever. And when I interviewed Sean McGinnis, who was recently president and COO of YPO, amazing, huge organization, he pulled back to his childhood and told this story. He grew up in, in, um, South, South Africa. Africa during apartheid. Um, and he, um, I'm, I'm going to get hazy on all the details of it, but there was an African American man who really raised him and his siblings and had a huge impact on him. And he just spoke with such reverence about this individual and the impact that he had on his life and um, how it affected his life to, to this day. And so that was a real surprise. I didn't even know, you know, I didn't see it coming or anything like that. And it was very touching and sincere. So, you know, that's one example. So I'll leave Sean it McGinnis. That. When I, when I, remember, he talked about Nelson Mandela and mm. a crazy story with Nelson Mandela mm. in South Africa. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I love that. Yeah. Uh, Jeremy wrapping things up, where can people go to learn more about you and I and the work that we do at rise 25? They can, anyone go to rise25.com. They can, there's a video of us. Um, you clipped it in, clipped in outtakes of it. So <laughs> I, you know, we, we joke around, we have humor about um, mistakes that we make and, and that kind of shows what it's about. So you can watch a video and it talks about how do you um, generate relationships and ROI with the podcast, but it's, and you can go to our about page and, and find out more about us as well on rise25.com. Excellent. All right. Thanks so much, Jeremy. What I've got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a peach if you find the same. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.